Hey Mark, this is Steve. Um, I'm going to make a flight sim video, video here just to show you um, kind of how cool this is. Um, this is a four or five year old graphics card I'm using too. So, um, as you know, they're not very available right now. So I've not upgraded in four or five years, or four years, I think it's four years, might be five. Anyway, this is the new Flight Sim 2020 thing, which is really cool. Um, I'm at the uh, Plymouth Canton Airport here, and the mission is to take off, take off to the south into the wind, turn around, come north, and fly over your favorite favorite place to fly, which is uh, the 35th District Court. Um, just see how it looks in the simulator. Um, it'd be interesting, huh? It used to I mean, it wasn't even there in, in the old simulators. You had nothing there. You might have had Plymouth Road, and that was it. Um, so I'm going to give this a try. Um, I don't know if I'm boring you to death or if you can take the pain of watching this video or not, but I thought it might be kind of cool. Do a quick um, view outside the airplane here. Show you what we're f flying in the sim. This is the uh, diamond, uh, let's say, what you call it? turbo, not turbo, it, it has turbo diesel or diesel piston engine. Actually runs on kerosene, but it's diesel, it's not jet. So but so it runs jet fuel, but it's burning in like a, a diesel engine, which is pretty wild. What would be really wild is if you could run like cheap diesel fuel in it, you know, and I think you actually can in an emergency, it'll, it'll actually burn that and you can run the engines for so many hours on what they call flex fuel or something like that. So this is the machine we're going to try to get in and f fly around here a little bit. So I'll switch the view back to the uh, internal. So here we are. The, uh, the road traffic is way more busy than I think it would be in real life. but. Um, so anyway, this is unedited, of course, just kind of cuff, doing this off the cuff, see how it goes, and see if I can remember how to turn this thing on and everything. Um, this is a non-controlled airport, so there's no air traffic controller or tower or anything here. And the airspace is also uncontrolled, um, up to 3,000 feet. If we get over 3,000 feet where we're at here, that goes into Detroit Metro's controlled airspace. So you got to call them call their tower if we want to go up into that airspace um, in order to fly there but below 3000 here we're completely uh, kind of on our own so uh, the only other controlled space is if you get toward Ann Arbor there they have a four mile controlled radius and so does Willow Run so if you get within four miles of Willow Run Airport you get permission to fly into their airspace and they are their airspaces are like 3300 or 3500 down to the ground so there's no flying under it like there is with you know Detroit since it's so big um, as you get closer to Detroit of course you can't their space goes down to the ground too when you get closer in but where we're at here it's 3,000 feet above their head above, above our head before we have to mess with it um, which will make this flight a little simpler in general so I'm gonna see if I can remember how to do this Somehow you got to turn the battery power on here, and I'm just winging this. I don't know what I'm doing. Um, elect? What the hell is that? This is the bit. That's just weird. So I'll turn on the avionics here, which will power up these guys and everything else. Turn on the fuel somewhere down here. This would go faster if I knew what I was doing. I'll figure it out, but I guess we'll turn on the fuel pumps for each engine. I'm guessing these are the ignition and these are the starters. Do 
we've got the fuel on. I think we're okay. I'll try starting the left engine first. Uh-oh. I think there might be a bug in the sim where these both have to be on before anything will start. There's also a time delay before they'll start. It's a bug where, in real life, this would have been fine to start the left engine. Freaking Microsoft. I'll turn the alternator on for that one so we're not, we're not killing the battery. So now we should be able to start the other one. I'll turn on that alternator. So now we're not going to kill the batteries or anything. So I'll release the parking brake wherever that is. See if we're free here. I see the joystick look thing's not working. That's somehow broken. In fact, we have no joystick controls at all. Don't know why that is. Try replugging it. So there's a recent upgrade, and I guess this um, wiped out all my control stick settings, which is really bad. That's very bad. That, mean, that might mean I'm not going to fly <laughs> in no video. So I probably have like basic controls here. I probably have basic controls here, but not all the freaking custom stuff I put on the button. So I could do flaps, gear, and all that on the stick. That's okay. We'll fight with it. Yeah, none of my... what was that? Oh, I guess I do have... You gotta love Microsoft. That's stuff I programmed in and it's working. So that should be flyable at least. So if the landing gear is still down, that's good. I didn't bring the landing gear up while we were sitting here. Alright, see if I can... See if the brake is still released. Yeah, it looks good. I don't know if you can hear me okay or not. I'll eat the mic a little bit. So I'll just taxi to the... This is Microsoft too. These guys will just pull right in front of you and... do all kinds of weird things that they wouldn't do in real life. It's a little awkward using the mouse to change the view. So we are just on the taxiway here, headed north to get to the runway eventually. Alright, and this has marking on the runway as if this was a controlled airport, and it's not. Which is retarded, but... One Delta, two traffic diamond, Alpha Sierra, X-ray Golf Sierra, taking off runway tree six departure to the north. So that's me just announcing my takeoff. And believe it or not, if there's anybody else in this multiplayer session, which this is, I have it set up to be always, always multiplayer, always available, 
always announcing. So if there's anybody else, they can, they can sort of look at the world map and they can see that somebody else is flying here. By the way, these, this is called a displaced, displaced threshold here on the runway, these arrows. Uh, the rules are you can take off from that part of the runway, but you can't land on it. So it can't take the, uh, the impact where, but it can take the weight of just driving on it or taxiing on it, right? And in real life, you want to use every, in real life, there's a fence down there. In real life, you want to use every bit of this runway that's available in case anything goes wrong. So the idea is not, not to show off and take off with half the runway, even if you can. See, I'm already wasting a couple feet behind me. What the heck? I'm kidding. Um, I have a little tiny, tiny, tiny bit more of runway there than I would have if I would have just taxied on to the... So anyway, um, I'm not looking at the, the takeoff checklist or anything, but there's, there is a run-up procedure for this to make sure everything's working. I'll do a basic one. I'll run it up to so much power and just make sure nothing's breaking or failing. That looks pretty good. Nothing's overheating or freaking out too bad. And because I want to use, normally I'd line up nice and straight, but I want to, this is a bit of an airplane for this short of a runway, so I want to really use some runway here. I'm also going to brake torque to take off a little bit so that we launch. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to do the takeoff now. Already announced it on the radio. Point of the runway there. All right, we have enough airspeed to start flying. And one of these buttons is gear up. That one. I'll do a left turn here and you should be able to see 275 pretty quick. That's probably IKEA down there, the red building. If you can I don't know if my microphone's working. I think that building is IKEA, but I'm not sure. And this airplane has plenty of power to kinda do cool stuff. Your old courthouse is literally just north of the runway here, a little tiny bit. Let's see if you can find it without missing it. So there be the runway we just took off from. We're in the regular uh, flight pattern here, and we're well below 3,000 feet, so we're probably at about 1,000 or 1,200 or something here. If you look kind of display, 1,600. I didn't zero the, the altimeter either, so that's probably not right. A lot, of, a lot of trees, more trees than I expected here. Don't know if that's realistic or not. There's a heck of a lot of a trees, a lot of a, a lot of a trees. Um, one thing I'm doing wrong is I never grabbed 275. I wanted to see that. I don't know why I didn't see 275. 
I was going to use 275 as a reference to, uh, there it is, to get to the courthouse, other than knowing it's almost due north. And it would be on my right, which would be not as good a visibility. So that might that might be Plymouth Road right there, and there's the uh, what you call it place. It used to be Burroughs or something, if, that, if I'm looking at that right. Which means there's your courthouse right there. Right on, look off the left wing there. Right at, we're right on top of it. So. Trying to break some rules. It's always time to break some rules. Always time. That's kind of cool. Go back, get another look at it. And this is pretty realistic. It does stall and you die and all kinds of stuff. And you'll overstress the aircraft if you, you know, go too fast, too hard. All that stuff. So you can't just jerk on the controls too hard. Things will go bad. Is that your car down there? It actually could be since you've worked there for a while. That's a satellite based interpretation of something. Alright, so that was that was the brunt of the video. Now I'll uh, I'll fly home to Ann Arbor, which will be probably unbelievably boring. But if you want the pain, you're welcome to it. Tower Diamond Alpha Sierra X-Ray Golf Sierra is type diamond to 62 2 miles northwest of 1 Delta to 1,200 feet. Requesting transition. Diamond Alpha Sierra X-Ray Golf Sierra transition approved. Report clear at Willow Run Tower airspace. Maintain on navigation. Will report clear Diamond X-Ray Golf Sierra. It won't take us too long to get to Ann Arbor. We're, we're buggy in here pretty good. As long as I keep it below 3,000, we're not going to screw with Detroit Metro and get in trouble and all that stuff. So I'll try to keep it here at about 2,000. And we have full clearance to touch um, Willow Run's airspace, which we're coming up and on soon. It's a pretty cool sim. I can see my mom's house and everything when, I, when I'm flying over there. I can see all of our RC fields and our RC runways and all that from this thing. So it's it's kind of fun that way. And that would be Willow Run coming up on our left there. So I'll head west of that. And 
get ourselves in touch with Ann Arbor. Ann Arbor is actually controlled just like they're very similar as far as footprint in the sky and all that, although Willow Run's a much bigger airport. Those are those are the lights from Ann Arbor over there showing up on the left. And I'm getting too close to 3,000 here. Tower Diamond X-Ray Golf Sierra is clear of the Willow Run Tower airspace. Diamond X-Ray Golf Sierra Willow Run Tower frequency change approved. We were actually clear the whole time. We didn't go into their space. We're getting close. If you talk to them, that kind of keeps you from getting in trouble in case you bump into it or whatever. That's a that's a whole set of rules that Ann Arbor Tower Diamond Alpha Sierra X-ray Golf Sierra is Niner miles northeast, one thousand eight hundred feet with Mike to land. Diamond Alpha Sierra, X-ray Golf Sierra, and Arbor Tower. Altimeter, 29 decimal minor, 5.008 at 7. Enter left downwind, runway 6. Enter left downwind, runway 6, Diamond X-ray Golf Sierra. And that is St. Joe Hospital on the left, I think. It has a helicopter, heli, heli, I can't talk straight. Two helicopter pads, I think. And then U of M Hospital has a bunch of them, but pretty sure that's St. Joe that we're passing on the left. I'll try to do a little bit of a scenic on that. Don't know if you've ever been to St. Joe with the kids good chance you have. We should probably be a little higher than this. I'm trying to spot the helipad. It's right down there in the middle to the right. I can see it, but it, you won't see it if you don't know what you're looking for. It took me an hour to find it when I was playing around with it with the helicopter. So that's the Ann Arbor runway down there. They told us to do a left downwind for runway six, so we'll do exactly that. Runway six is a pain. I'm not used to six. I usually end up with for, which is what we're lined up for right now, almost. It's kind of weird coming from the other direction. Since it's weird and I'm not comfortable, I should probably go out a little ways and give myself plenty of time to line up.
this plane is a little, I don't know, it's not as easy to fly as like a Cessna or something in here. It's a little more, it's a little heavier and faster. Pretty cool, pretty cool. There's a grass, right? if you look out your left there, there's a grass runway over here too. So I'm gonna go out a little ways before I turn around, come back just so I can not be rushed on the landing as much. Probably going out way more further than I really have to, but I'll go down to about to the end of this farmer's field down here and turn it around, and I'll drop some altitude in the turn too. Probably overshot the runway already. Which is why we want that extra room. Eh, not too bad. Yeah, she did not overshoot it. Pulled the landing gear up though and it didn't want to. And I completely lost sight of the runway. That's fun. Here we, I see the beacon, but we're like, trees are too high. This is weird. And I was pretty high when I did that turn too. This is annoying. I thought this was kind of a weird approach kind of thing on this, coming from this way. Whatever, we'll deal with it. And I don't have the visibility on the this set up to where I can see very good. We're doing better now.
Yeah, visibility sucks. So does my uh, landing gear lights. They don't show up very good when the sun's shining on them. I looked down there and I almost panicked that they didn't look like they were down, and they are. I'm actually going to go... I'm actually going to go over to my friend Scott's hangar over here, which I don't usually do in the simulator. Diamond X Ray Golf Sierra contact ground on 121.6. Going to 121.6 decimal six Diamond X Ray Golf Sierra. That was fun. There's not really fuel service over here on this side of the place. And his hangar in real life is this one here on the left. The big one. Yeah, it doesn't look anything like that in real life. It looks it's in the right spot, but it doesn't have all those doors. The doors are all over here on the side. It's got a big door on that side in real, in real life. Let's park it over here in the shade. That's about that. I think I turned everything off. Should have turned these off first. I think. One more outside look. even have the sound of the metal cooling off. It's funny. And just so you know, I was a girl all that time. Alright, Mark. Take care. I'm going to sign off of here.